Hi, I'm Alex, and this is Pucks and Paperbacks. Today, I am recommending you 10 books that have mental health rep. This is my first book recommendation video of the year, I'm pretty sure, and I apologize that it's taken this long because my whole channel is based around book recommendations, and I haven't done one this year. I'm planning to do weekly queer book recommendations in June, so feel free to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But today, I am sharing with you you my favorite books with mental health rep. Because May is Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to showcase some of my favorite books with mental health rep. Mental health is really important to me and I love reading about characters who are like me. I have social anxiety, seasonal depression. All the titles I mentioned will be listed below. Let's get started. Starting off with the book that inspired this video, The Science of Being Angry by Nicole Mellaby. I was kindly sent a copy of this from the publisher Algonquin Young Readers to review and I cannot wait to share this book with you. This is not sponsored, they just sent me the book to review and I really appreciate it. This is a sapphic middle grade about a girl named Joey who has anger issues and throughout the whole book she's trying to figure out why she's so angry and she is determined to figure this out. Throughout the whole book, Joey is trying to find the answers to why she's so angry. Joey is a triplet and her mother's used a donor so they could have a family. As the title states, this book does go into science and genetics. In school, Joey is assigned a project about nature versus nurture and she's learning all about genetics. And so in her mind, she is determined to find the donor because she believes that is where her anger stems from. Joey is experiencing intrusive thoughts and I really appreciated how this was done. As somebody who relates to having anger <laughs> issues, I could relate to this a lot. And I really appreciated it because there's not a lot of books that talk about anger as a symptom of mental health. And what I love most about this book is that Joey does not get a clear diagnosis and it emphasizes how getting a diagnosis takes time and why you need to take it in strides and just be careful with it. And I really appreciated this. It has queer rep. I thought the family dynamics in this book were done really well because we see Joey's moms just wanting the best for her and they want to find out and just find a solution to help her be less angry and just be calm. And I really appreciated the family dynamics because we see a lot of talk about genetics and as the book goes on Joey is learning that a lot of her family members do experience anger and it's not just her. Her brothers are telling her that she's mean and she just feels so lonely and it was just so great to have this representation in a middle grade book because anger is a really big symptom and it's an important one that I think should be addressed more in literature. And I just really enjoyed this. And it has hockey, which I was really surprised about when I started reading. I had no idea that that was going to be incorporated in this book and it just made me love it a little bit more. Joey's half brother Benny has ADHD and he plays hockey to to help regulate that. So he suggests that Joey sign up for a hockey team because it can help her just release her anger. And oh my God, I related to that so much because me, a hockey fan with anger, could relate to that so much. Hockey is a form of self-care for me, which is really funny, but just by watching it, it really helps calm me and just get all of my anger out that I have pent up. So I really appreciated that hockey was incorporated in that sense, but also hockey is very popular in Joey's household. They are fans of the Chicago Blackhawks and the New Jersey Devils. I really love how hockey was incorporated in this book because it shows how beneficial the sport can be, but also it teaches Joey that because she's a girl, she actually can be on the hockey team. Though there's no clear diagnosis, Joey does experience mental health issues as she is grappling with the intrusive thoughts in her head. My next recommendation is another middle grade, and this is a graphic novel that recently came out 
and I read it through NetGalley. This is Swim Team by Johnny Christmas. This has anxiety representation and it is following a girl named Brie who moves from New York to Florida with her father as he got a new job. Brie loves math and puzzles and when she arrives at the school she finds out that the math puzzles class is full so she has to enroll in the swim class. So as anybody with anxiety would she just tries to avoid the situation at all costs. The way anxiety is represented in this book is so well done because I'll try and have a photo on the screen but it just is showing her walking around and then there are like clouds that have all of these intrusive thoughts. There will be moments where she is experiencing anxiety and you see the intrusive thoughts just popping up around her. I was so impressed by that and I thought it was so well done. This book is all about friendship as Brie is at this new school and she befriends some girls and just learns all about teamwork and swimming. So if you want a middle grade graphic novel with anxiety rep and swimming, I highly recommend this one. Next I have a children's book and this is Small Night and the Anxiety Monster by Monka Kasha. This has a non-binary character. This is about Small Night who is about to come out to their family but they're really afraid and an anxiety monster pops up and follows them throughout the story and I just really enjoyed this. I really like how anxiety is illustrated in books. I think it's really awesome and just cool to see a visual representation. So I highly recommend this one because it's awesome. And my last recommendation for young readers is Delicates by Brenna Thumler. This is the sequel to Sheets. This has representation for depression and suicidal thoughts. It is following the main character Marjorie from Sheets but we're also introduced to a new character Eliza who loves paranormal photography and she is heavily bullied at school for it. She loves to go into a dark room and she's just so fixated on capturing ghosts and I really enjoyed the way that this was done. Bullying does have its effects and it is really important to teach kids that it is okay to ask for help and to tell an adult when things like this are happening and it was just really well done and what I really liked is the character development of Marjorie because she actually is participating in the bullying but then she learns that her actions actually mean something and I thought it was a really great message to teach kids so I highly recommend it. Those were my recommendations for young readers and now I'm going to get into the YA titles. Starting with Icebreaker by A.L. Grazia Day. This has representation for depression and anxiety. This is a queer rivals to lovers following Jason and Mickey who are hockey players on the same team but they are battling it out to get the first round pick in the NHL draft and the way their representation is done is awesome. Mickey has depression and anxiety and I just really enjoyed this because the book does tackle toxic masculinity because hockey is a very macho sport and just in recent years have they been talking more about mental health and why it's so important. A lot of players in the NHL have spoken up about this and they are trying to make things better. Because we have guys who are open about their mental health and Mickey is just dealing with a lot and I just thought that it was represented really well. There is a storyline where Mickey is diagnosed and he is taking medicine. The characters in this book are why I loved it so much and the fact that we have men talking about mental health with each other is so important especially in the hockey world. Because hockey is a sport that reeks of toxic masculinity it was so important to see mental health discussed in this book. There's literally a scene where he is asked to go to a concert. He's excited about it. Yeah. But then the day it comes he's like no I literally don't want to do this. I don't want to go at all. I don't want to. I would hate it. I don't want to. That scene spoke to me and I could really relate to a lot of his struggles in this book. Throughout the course of the book Mickey starts taking antidepressants and it was actually nice to see a character who is taking medication because I don't usually see it positively represented and it was just great because he was able to talk to his teammates openly about his mental health 
even if he felt ashamed. And it was just great. I think if you're looking for a book about being in college and having mental health issues, I highly recommend this book. Next, I have two books for social anxiety, so I'm going to go over them really quickly. This is an underrated book. It is The Sound of Us by Julie Hammerly. This is about a girl named Kiki who enrolls in an opera camp for the summer and she has social anxiety. This is such an underrated book and I mention it whenever I can. This is the first book I saw social anxiety rep in and I try to mention it as much as I can because I thought it was really well done and I could relate to it a lot. As someone with social anxiety, I really appreciated the representation in here because Kiki has a lot of friends online and it's showing how she has a really good connection with her friends online and it just shows how different she can be in a social setting and I just really enjoyed it and it was good. So if you want to pick it up, I'll have a link down below. And going off of that, I have Top 10 by Katie Catugno, which also has hockey in it. This is a dual perspective between Gabby and Ryan who were best friends in high school, but they have a falling out. And so we are in a then and now timeline just trying to piece together what happened. I'm pairing these books together because they are the first two books that I saw Social Anxiety Rep in and really resonated with. Just like The Sound of Us, I really appreciated the representation in this book because it shows how her social anxiety really hinders her life and how she doesn't want to go to a party but Ryan really wants her to so she goes and she experiences an anxiety attack and I just really enjoyed that representation because instead of just saying the character has social anxiety we are witnessing how her social anxiety forms and what triggers it. And we also have really good commentary on concussions because Ryan is a hockey player and hockey is his only way out of school and just being able to make a career for himself and he is just really determined to get a scholarship but he's gotten too many concussions and it's really just not helping him out and I really enjoyed the way that that was done. So if you want another book about hockey and mental health rep, I got you covered. I should just title the video books with mental health rep and hockey. <laughs> Next is another graphic novel series and this is Heartstopper. It has anxiety rep and an eating disorder. The eating disorder representation comes in during volumes three and four. So I just wanted to point that out. And also in This Winter, which is a novella that also talks about Charlie's eating disorder. But I really appreciate seeing eating disorder representation in men and so I wanted to include this. This is a really great queer graphic novel series following Charlie and Nick as their romance blooms but it is so much more than that because it tackles an eating disorder and I didn't know that going into the books but I'm really glad that it tackles hard topics because it's really important to talk about eating disorders in men and I just really appreciated that representation. So definitely go and read this series if you haven't yet. As I'm filming this today, two more seasons have been announced for the TV show and I am so excited. Next is a book with OCD representation and sports. <laughs> Well, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel where I recommend sports book recommendations for literally anything. If you like them, you've came to the right spot. The next book I have has representation for OCD and this is Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. This is about a girl named Sam who is struggling with her friendship and she has OCD. But one day a girl named Caroline introduces her to this underground poetry club in their school called Poets Corner and she learns that poetry is a coping mechanism for her. She's also a swimmer. I'm recommending this because it's a really fast read but it's an important one and I think it still holds up today. One of my friends who has OCD really resonated with this book and I wanted to share it with you. This is a good one and I still have a fond memory of it today. Next is Little Universes by Heather Demetrios. I adore this book. 
it has grief, it has addiction. This follows May and Hannah who are two sisters and they lose their parents to a tsunami in Malaysia. Due to this tragedy they are forced to leave California and move to Boston for their senior year of high school. I don't want to point out that this is a really graphic and heavy read so please know that before going into it but I enjoyed it a lot. It has science and it does follow a character who has an opioid addiction. And my last recommendation is Challenger Deep by Neil Shusterman and if you can get access to the audiobook I highly recommend it. Neil Shusterman wrote this along with his son who is living with schizophrenia and this follows Caden who also lives with schizophrenia and just how it has affected his life. The book is divided between hallucinations and reality and it just shows the mind and life of someone living with schizophrenia. That is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more recommendation videos feel free to hit subscribe and if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up so more people can see it. I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye!